All right, so um, here we have kind of where we left off in our room. I have some stuff with layers in here. Uh, we kind of went through the texturing and wrapping of our oven. I added a few more assets that match my room reference. And um, so we add our walls in here. What I'm thinking about doing is just sort of sectioning off just the um, the walls and the uh, floor essentially, just like this small area here, this corner piece. So these other walls, these additional ones, aren't kind of blocking my view. So we could probably just grab these and just make a new uh, layer up here. So now you can see because we have them selected and just call this secondary walls. And then we'll rename our other layer like kitchen walls. So, and then what I can do is just kind of look at this so that anything that's obstructing my view as I'm modeling, for example, this wall can be added, this little guy here. And I can just hit F to focus, and then I can start to think about how I'm going to frame my camera for my render or my game, like whatever the, the most important elements in the scene. So back here, um, what I'm going to do next is just click through these images. And anything that I think I like, and I'm using DuckDuckGo because what's really neat is, say I like this image here, if I click on it and I click on it again, notice it compartmentalizes it and I can just drag it in here. Now I've got a really big picture. So I actually do kind of like this. Um, and what you want to do is start to think about for your, essentially your final project is um, how can I transmit this setup here into my scene? So you can see there's burgers here, there's little bananas and stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and just, because of this time of this video, is um, knock out this section and place it in my scene. And I'm thinking about placing this against this back wall here. So right against here, same thing here, these are getting in my way. And let's hide the roof too. So let's get rid of the ceiling, which is where? Where is my ceiling? Well, I might just have to add you there. Right, I'm going to hit F to focus on this and just sort of um, bring this in a little bit. So what I want to do to bring in this birthday scene, and so part of your final project is you're going to have to create essentially a little uh, transfer this room into a birthday scene. And you kind of want people to guess, you know, how old the person is that's going to be whose birthday it is. So I'm going to select this floor. I'm going to turn on Make Live over here. And I'm going to go over to Create Polygon Primitive. And I'm just going to make a, oops, let's see. I think that is set to not interactive creation. Oh, actually, you know what? It's on this layer. So I'm going to make a new layer here and then just call this um, uh, birthday table. And then everything on this birthday table will go on this layer. So I'm going to save that. And now with that selected and I have the floor here, I'm going to hold spacebar, right click on uh, my here. Or actually, I'm going to go to create here, polygon primitive. And you can actually, at this point, release the spacebar and then just hit select cube. And now I should be able to drag it out and it'll be on this layer. See that? Or I'm lying to you, it's not on that layer. So let's go add selected objects. All right, so I'm going to scale this down. It's got these kind of bowed legs. Because it's not really seen, um, I'm not going to go too crazy with that. So let's make sure that, here, let's uncheck Make Live so it doesn't keep snapping. And let's go ahead and just really, we're going to rapid prototype this for a second. So I want to make it where if they, we need to get any more birthday stuff from this cabinet at all, because we need this ladder. We want to give them enough room to get in there. So I'm going to hold Shift, copy this. And then I'm going to hold Shift again, copy that, and then hit R. And create what amounts to this table here. So something like this. It's kind of positioning this in the middle. Now I like this shape a lot, and I'm going to use it for the cake and some of the other elements. And let's just position this here. Now remember, we always gray box first, and then we add cuts to do these other things, or we can use, um, there's a nifty, like a, 
a nifty tool inside of um, essentially inside of uh, Maya that lets you simulate cloth and so we'll, we'll maybe we'll do that in another video I'll show you guys how to use the cloth simulation tool so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna go to create well let's go ahead and make this live and I'm gonna go to create polygon primitive and then I'm gonna go to cube and I'm gonna make one cup now ordinarily if this was for a game all you would do is make one cup and extrude this out and you would texture out these lines but since the rest of this project we are just modeling we're not focusing on texturing for a while I'm going to just make one cup and I'm gonna assume this is more for film and what I'm gonna do is um, is I'm just gonna make a gray box low poly version of this cup and uh, just duplicate it a bunch of times So double clicking each one of these, hitting control and backspace, right clicking, go to vertex mode, scale this, oops, let's make sure this is off. Scale this down so we just get that general shape of this pink solo cup, right? Let's make sure this is a little more circular here. Um, design wise, uh, you can, if this is gonna be seen up close, let's uh, go to vertex here. You can go ahead and just insert that lip Really, you could just add a white streak across the, the tip of this thing, and people would get the idea that that's the white part of the solo cup, like if you are texturing it. But for now, that's pretty good for now. So let's go ahead and bring this down here. I'm going to hit F to focus. I don't know how many cups that is, but I'm going to just shift and just duplicate these up a lot. So something like this. And I think that's good for now. Now the truth is, if you, if I select all the cups, right? Like for example, this one, I'm gonna hit four. If I go in here, and this is the smart way to do it, if I know these cups are never getting lifted off, I can just go in and delete these. That's probably the best way to go about doing this. And then with this ring, right? Here, let's say I have this ring, right? And it's like the deleted faces. I really could just select all of these, delete them, and do the same thing like this. This is kind of the, if you are going to go high poly, like really this is all you need is something like this. All right, so that's kind of one way of doing it. Another way is, like I said, you can, um, let's move this back. You can actually, um, the, the game way I was saying is like you can select these faces inside of here. And just hold shift and then what you do is you draw like you paint a bunch of white strips white and pink strips and it looks like pretty much the same all right so those are kind of two other ways to do it um, let's see if I could steal this cylinder and I'm gonna make these over here so just kind of hit F I'm gonna position this in place And these are pretty identical with a card on the top. So I'm just going to select these faces here. Hold shift, extrude up. I'm not going to go too crazy because, like I said, we're still in the gray boxing way phase. And I'm going to make live this object here. And I'm going to hold space bar. Here, let's make sure this is live. There you go. I'm going to hold space bar, go to create polygon primitive cube, and just draw out a thin card. And I don't know what that card says. Maybe one says like pink lemonade and one says like, I don't know, green goo monster juice or something. Now what I am gonna do, because these are never really gonna move and they're pretty similar, is I'm gonna select both of these. Let's kind of rotate this back a little bit. And select both and then combine it. And then I'm gonna hold shift and duplicate it to make the second one. Actually, before I do that, we can go ahead and just make this nozzle. So see how it's kind of like flat on the top? I'm going to grab this cup. I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. Scale this down a ton. Just move it into place here. And 
and then hold shift, duplicate it again. Bring it up here. Go to vertex mode. I'm just kind of speeding this thing up. And I kind of like that little lip from the cup. So something like this. And it looks like it's got a little tab on the top. Uh, so actually this goes down here, I believe. So something like that. And then this is a little lower. And I'm going to exaggerate it just a little bit. And then let me see if there's any cubes around here I can steal. I know there's this guy. So we'll just take that one. I'm going to shift right click. I double clicked it to get all those faces. And then I'm going to go to duplicate face. If it ever does it where you double click it and you can't duplicate the face, and it gives you like an error, sometimes you have to go off the, the model there, you know, or you have to delete history. So let's scale this down a bunch. And it looks like it's got a little bit of a, um, like a, it's kind of, it's more narrow at the bottom. So let's go to vertex mode. Let's grab these two and scale them in. All right, so let's select all of these and combine it. There we go. And let's hold shift and let's copy another one. And they're both kind of rotated a little bit like that. And they are sitting above a plate. So let's grab this. I'm actually going to just leave one over here in case I need it. Hold shift. Let's get rid of these inside edges. I don't need those. And let's just make this plate. Seems like it almost goes to the edge. So I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to grab these faces. And what it does is it goes all the way through. And then when I bring this down, it gives us that plate, that curved plate area. And then if I need to, here, let's flatten this out a little bit. Um, we can go to face mode, hit R, and then extrude this out, scale that in. And then I can just insert another edge loop. And that'll give us a little bit of a curve. All right. Um, let's see. We can um, easily just kind of knock this shape out. There's a couple ways to do that. We could do it with a curve or, um, let's see, what's another way I can show you how to do it? You know what, let me show you a kind of a cool trick that I like to do. So I'm going to go to shift right click, I'm going to combine this. I'm going to face mode, and I'm going to duplicate each one of these faces. So I'm holding shift as I double click here, and I haven't really shift. And then I select one face and I double click again. Now what I'm going to do is shift right click, and I'm going to extract those faces. And I'm going to move them out and then scale them down. Oops. Oh, sorry, I want to duplicate those faces. Not, um... Sorry, not extract. So shift, right click, duplicate faces. There we go. Now what I can do is scale those in and then pull them out away from the surface. And then what I'm going to do is notice that they combine. So with these two selected, let's go to object mode here. I'm going to shift, right click, combine. And then I'm going to go to face mode. I'm just going to delete these two faces. 
to make sure I have these selected, then I go to face mode. Delete these, and then I'm going to bridge these edges. So edge mode, select both of these edges. So we have that. And honestly, so you see where it says divisions? If I knock it up to one, this this one here is going to be what we need to kind of create that inset shape. And I'm leaving it a little bit exaggerated because if we go from a distance, you can barely see it even at that height, especially if it's in game. So I'm going to do the same thing back here. I'm just going to bridge these edges. And yeah, let's go one division. Let's just kind of bring this in. And then these two, I'm going to hit R and just kind of scale them to straighten them out so they're on the same sort of wavelength. Looks like this was the one, you know, we have an extra one here. So here, let's select this. Let's bring it down so it's lined up. And then let's actually just get rid of, let's see, these two edges maybe? I'm going to select both of these edges and then hold, hit control backspace. And then these are below here and then I'm going to hold shift and then I'm going to make the base that's kind of holding these things up like that. And then what I can do is combine these two. And then go to edge mode and just kind of just insert some loops around here that are near each other. Go to edge mode. And then combine, bridge those. You know, you could just tweak it a little bit so it's... I wonder if I grab something behind it. All right, let's do one more over here. There we go. Kind of straighten this out just a little bit. All right, we're going to just kind of finish this off on the other side. Man, it's being finicky today, Maya. There we go. We can select these edges here, hit R, Now, I'm not terribly concerned about the other side because you're not really going to see it. Now, you can, if you want to, thin this out but and, you know, cleaning this up so it's a little bit tighter in here. Like, you know, this one needs to be straightened out. And the next video will create the curvature of those things. But little by little, we're getting, um, with this rapid prototype approach, you can see it looks quite beautiful. Like, even with these, like, gray boxed elements, like, you're 90% where you need to be. All right, so let's uh, just delete history so we don't forget that. And then um, let's save it. And then we will, in the next video, come back and continue to work on our little birthday area.